You're listening to the Life with Old Dogs podcast, and I'm your host, Dawn Mimna, primary caretaker of all of our wonderful senior German Shepherds right here at Woody's Place Senior German Shepherd Sanctuary. Hey there, and welcome back to the Life with Old Dogs podcast. Um, Just a reminder, it's season three, and we are covering the 20 most common health issues in senior German shepherds. So you you can listen to it in this podcast, and you can also read about it in our blog post over at WPSGSS.org. And just uh, look at the upper right-hand corner of the page, and you'll see a drop-down menu, and you can look for the Life with Old Dogs blog posts there. All right, let's get to it. Um, In this episode, we are covering arthritis. So it is what you need to know about arthritis in your senior German Shepherd dog. So we have no shortage of senior German Shepherd residents in our care and previously um, with arthritis. In fact, I'm convinced that they all have some form of arthritis, but for some it's debilitating and others um, it's it's um, more manageable. Um, and unfortunately, arthritis in senior German Shepherds is a common condition um, one that affects their joints and can lead to pain, which makes it um, can make it rather difficult for them to get around or even stand up without causing them um, pain or, or discomfort. Now, there can be some confusion about what arthritis looks like in a senior German Shepherd, and I've heard this many, many times. So when someone has um, an older German Shepherd and you know, they can't get up or they're having trouble standing or, you know, um, they're they're just, their body posture is different. Um, People automatically assume it's hip dysplasia. It's hip dysplasia. It's hip dysplasia. I don't know how many times I've heard that. And I try to educate the best I can and let the um, the um, German Shepherd parent know that there are many, many reasons why a dog, uh, their dog could be having trouble getting up, getting up, staying upright, um, not, you know, kind of weaving their back and weaving back and forth, um, why they're afraid to walk on a hardwood surface, why they can't stay up on a hardwood surface, uh, all those things um, other than hip dysplasia. But that that seems to be the most common thing. Not thing, but um, health issue that that um, that the average German shepherd owner will go to. But it could be arthritis and arthritis in senior German shepherds uh, presents itself in different ways. And there are a few telltale signs. There are more than a few, but you may see limping, uh, stiffness. Trouble getting up or standing, you know, staying in an upright position. Excuse me. Um, Visible swollen joints that are hot to the touch. Not wanting to be active like they once were. Um, Having issues navigating a surface like hardwood floors. Uh, Having an unusually arched back or other uh, posture changes. Um, being snappish when they normally weren't before, licking, licking a spot over and over again until it it actually can change the the color of their fur because they're they're licking one spot, like a particular joint, so much. Um, And perhaps even having issues, uh, changes, I should say, in uh, bowel movement. Um, they're, they're just some of the symptoms of arthritis in an older German Shepherd dog. Now you could see one of those, one of those telltale signs. You could see several 
of those telltale signs. Or you could start out with one of those telltale signs and progress into um, seeing more of those telltale signs as the arthritis begins to progress. The bottom line is, even if you see one of those telltale signs like limping or stiffness or trouble getting up and standing up, please don't just assume, oh, my, my dog's 10 years old. You know, he's just getting old. Um, because the bottom line is it's painful. It's painful and the pain needs to be addressed. I mean, think about, um, think about yourself. Um, for a second here, you know, I think, I think this is really just common sense. If, if you have arthritis, which many of us do, um, especially here in the, the Northern part of the country where it's, it's cold and, and, you know, damp all winter long, um, you know, that feeling. And if you don't have arthritis, think of another pain that you've had, you know, maybe a toothache or something like that, something that, that just hurts and it, and it doesn't go away until the pain is addressed. Well, that's arthritis in our senior German shepherds and they can't open their mouths and tell us this hurts and I need, I need help managing this pain. So please don't ignore a limp or stiffness or trouble getting up and just assume it's, you know, um, it's natural for a senior German shepherd to feel that way and look that way. I mean, maybe it is, but, you know, doesn't doesn't mean that we don't address it. So fortunately, there are there are many treatments available for arthritis in our senior German shepherds. But sadly, like humans, there is no cure for it. Um we at Woody's Place Senior German Shepherd Sanctuary, our our go-to. Okay, this is this is I mean, after we're done assessing them when they come in to determine um, you know, how physically active they are um without without hurting themselves. Because we have some come in that, um, you know, like Prince, for for instance, Prince is very active outside. Does that mean he should be? No, not to the degree that he wants to be, because we know for a fact he's loaded with arthritis because there's been extensive x-rays and diagnostic imaging done uh, because he also has degenerative myelopathy. So, um so we know he's loaded with arthritis, but he also has DM2. But if we let him if we let him run around like a like a you know like a crazy dog, you know, for long periods of time, he will. But that's only going to cause that's only going to inflict more pain on him. So we don't allow him to do that. So once we assess um, what the senior German shepherds can handle in terms of physical activity when they come in, we then implement uh, physical activity for our residents multiple times a day. So our, our go-to is short, frequent walks on level surface other than concrete or blacktop. Um, I sound like a broken record here, but we're in a rural area. Um, and I, I continue to say this because uh, new uh, we have new listeners um, regularly. And I don't know if they know where we're located. So uh, we're, we're in the rural part of northeastern Pennsylvania. And um, there's, we are not in a concrete jungle at all. So, um, so our dogs rarely ever see black top and concrete, which is good because, you know, we have, we have knuckle draggers. And when I say that, I mean like a uh, Prince, for instance, and Jensen who just passed and these dogs who have neurological um, issues in their back end, such as degenerative myelopathy or a herniated disc, have a tendency to knuckle over their, you know, their feet aren't upright, like their pads of their feet aren't on the ground. It's actually their knuckles, the, the front of their uh, paws are flipped over and um, they can drag and it can scrape the fur and the skin right off their knuckles and cause, uh, you know, sores, bleeding and infection. So rarely ever do we walk the dogs on a, a rough surface such as concrete or blacktop, um, primarily because we just don't have it really here. And secondly, because um, we 
we don't want anyone scraping their knuckles. So when we're out here and we're walking on the sanctuary, it's it's dirt. <laughs> it's dirt. It's grass. You know, we have fields and we have woods. That's it. And creeks. And, you know, um, it's better for our senior German shepherds in that sense. But anyway, um, we we go out on group walks. Uh, sometimes we do individual walks. Sometimes we walk the dogs in pairs. But they are short, frequent walks throughout the day. Now, when I say short, we may go out and actually walk for about 15 to 20 minutes each walk. But we're out longer um, during that, that time because we also incorporate... Um, snafaris <laughs> for the dog. So we are firm believers in letting our residents here sniff, uh, sniff it up. That's, that's, you know, I don't know who termed the coin snafari, but I absolutely love it. And the dogs love snafaris here because there's so many different smells from, you know, the fields to the woods, to the farm animals that we have, to the wild animals that are around. I mean, there's just so many things for them to smell and and they love it. And I said before, I, I, I watch them, especially in the woods and they're sniffing this tree and then they're all running over to this giant rock and they're all gathering and sniffing around this rock. And to me, it's like equivalent to someone reading the Sunday paper. I guess not that they're so popular anymore, but you know, and, and that's where you got all your information from and you read it front to back and, you know, it, it was just a wonderful source of information. So, that is what sniffing is for dogs. So we go out and we take short, frequent walks and we incorporate these wonderful snafaris for the dogs on our walks. So they're walking, but they're taking short breaks and we do what they can do. So for instance, Jensen just passed and, um, Jensen did his best to keep up with us, but with degenerative myelopathy, he had a hard time. So as his disease progressed, he would walk the best he can, but he would fall down and I'd have him in his help him up harness and I'd help him back up and he'd walk a little bit more and then he'd fall down. And we just repeated this throughout the whole, the whole walk. Um, and when I say fall down, I don't mean like he fell down, you know, violently. He, he would just lay down. Um, so when we would, we would go into the woods, I would, you know, help him to a spot that he really wanted to smell and let him sniff it up. And then I'd let him lay there for a while where the other dogs were walking around. And when Jensen could get up and walk around again, I'd help him back up and we would just continue that, um, for each, each walk. Uh, but it, it this is a little off topic here, but it's still really important for a, D, a DM dog to get out there and participate um, and try to be as physically active as possible and mentally stimulated as well. Um, but we will cover that more when we get to the Degenerative Myelopathy podcast. All right. Anyway, sur- short, frequent walks throughout the day. On level surfaces. I feel like I need to add that. Um <clears throat> So when you have a dog, a, a senior German Shepherd who has, who has arthritis, um, again, it's really common sense. You know, you, you don't want them out there hiking, you know, up a mountain with you um, or jumping over giant logs and, and boulders. I mean, again, they're going to want to try to do it because they're, they're going to want to be with you. And they're going to want to please you. And they may even want to do it just to satisfy their own curiosity as to what's on the other side. But that doesn't mean we let them. Um, Another thing we do, weather pending, is we also have um, property at a private lake. It's only about five minutes up the road. Um, My family had actually um, constructed it decades ago. Um, And... We take the dogs up there to swim. Now, typically, we don't take them all at once. Um, if if there's enough help, we do. But if it's just myself, I'll take two at a time, and they can go up there um, 
Never have I really seen any of the senior German Shepherds actually swim in the lake, but they will get in like up to their bellies and they'll wade around in it and, um, you know, on a nice sunny hot day and just have fun. And uh, it's fantastic. Oops, sorry about that. It's fantastic for for their, their arthritis to uh, be in the water and have a virtually no impact workout while they're enjoying what they're doing, um, smelling uh, all the smells and po possibly tasting the water if they want to, or carrying a stick in the lake with them and playing with the stick in the lake. Um, so they're having fun, but it's also helping with their arthritis, um, soothe the discomfort of their arthritis. Which brings me to therapies for senior German Shepherds with arthritis. Um, we try to be eclectic with the treatment uh, because what may work for one of our residents may not work for another, or what may work for one resident for a period of time um, may not after a certain amount of time. So we, we try to be eclectic with therapies, but here is the breakdown of the different therapies that we have found to be successful Uh with arthritis in our senior German Shepherds. And I kind of just touched base on it. Hydrotherapy. Um, unfortunately, there's nowhere really close to us that offers uh, canine hydrotherapy. In fact, the closest one is, you know, over an hour away, uh, one way, but we have gone there when needed. Um, and hydrotherapy is, you know, it's an underwater treadmill for the dogs and they get in this this tank and the water fills up to just just under their belly, kind of like how far out they go in the lake. And then uh, the therapist um, turns the treadmill on at a slow pace. I mean, really, it's like a snail's pace. <laughs> and the dog starts walking and then they walk for a certain period of time and then they'll stop and they'll take a break and then they'll walk again for a certain um, certain amount of time. So that helps to maintain their muscle mass and um, work on their joints while minimizing any discomfort. Um, the next therapy, which we've also had done, is laser therapy. And that helps reduce uh, inflammation, swelling, muscle spasms, if there are any, stiffness, which there most likely is, and pain, um, all associated with arthritis. Massage is another therapy, um, and we, we are fortunate enough to have one of our volunteers who does canine, canine, um, canine massage and Reiki. Um, uh, she is um, Karen Wachowski, and she is almost, uh, she is located almost at the Four Corners in Hamlin, for those of you who are local, in the uh, same build, building as um, the Teal Feather. Uh, give her a call. I'll see if I'll get her information. I know we've highlighted her in our spotlight, um, Sunday spotlight um, on Facebook and Instagram, but I'll get her number and uh, put it in the show notes. And if you have a, if you're local to us and you have a dog, doesn't have to be a senior German Shepherd, and you would like to get a massage for that dog, I would highly, highly recommend Karen. Um, not only is she an excellent um, human and canine massage therapist, but she she's a dog owner. In fact, she just adopted a German Shepherd because of us not too long ago. And she um, really has a knack for dogs, especially bigger dogs. So I would highly recommend her. And when I say massage, I, I don't mean a simple back rub, although that's nice, and I'm sure your senior German Shepherd would appreciate it. Um, there are certain techniques that are applied that really only, um, only a canine certified massage therapist should, should do, uh, because if you don't know what you're doing, you can cause, uh, cause more harm than good. And you know, I, I'm certain you don't want that. I'm certain you want the best for your dog. Uh, but if you can't afford a canine massage therapist and you really want to try to do that with your dog, um, in our blog post, which I will 
uh, post the link in the show notes for this podcast, there is a link at PetMD that um, gives you four simple dog massage therapy techniques. Um, but I, I have to I have to reiterate there that you need to know what you're doing. And if you're not sure, please, please, you know, don't try this at home because because you don't want to cause more harm than good. And just a little side note here, we, we've we purchased um, a massager, it's called the Pet Wave. Um, and it's, I, I mean, I've seen them for people too, you know, they're, it's, it's got like a long handle on it and it's got different, um, different tips that you could put on uh, to, to um, massage differently. One's kind of like, like a nubby, I don't know, kind of reminds me of um, like this glove that I have that's silicone and it, you know, goes through the dog and it has all these little nubs on it and it pulls all the loose hairs off. So there's something like that. There's some, uh, an attachment with like three little cups on it. Um, but anyway, we, we will use that on the senior German shepherds here at the sanctuary. We never, ever, ever have it on the high setting. Oh my God. I don't even know why it's on this device, the pet wave, because it's entirely too hard and too harsh. Uh, we only use the first setting, which is very light. And um, basically we use it because some of the dogs really, really love it. And it's to help with uh, poor circulation, which can often be associated with arthritis. Um, again, think about it. If, if your dog has arthritis, they don't want to get up and move around a whole lot. That means their circulation is getting worse. And, you know, you have to you have to keep their circulation going. Um, and this is one way that helps keep their circulation going. And the senior German shepherds here seem to like it. Again, that's Pet Wave. And that is also in our blog post. All right, moving along here. Some other ways to help your senior German shepherd with arthritis is number one, first and foremost, Keep your dog's weight under control. Um, I know this can be such a touchy subject. I think of my mom. <laughs> my mom loves to um, give her dogs food. And, and you know, I know she's equating the food with love. And, and I, I love the idea that she loves her dogs so much because she does. But unfortunately, her dogs, you know, end up with chubby charts at the vet. And, and that's not good. Um, and then, you know, like many, she gets upset, you know, if the vet says something about her dog being overweight. And this is not an uncommon thing. My mom loves her dog so much. Um, and, um, you know, I know she has just the biggest heart when it when it comes to her dogs, like many people do. But keeping your dog's weight under control, maybe even a little slightly underweight, um, is really going to be beneficial for them as they get older. The reason being the less weight on the joints, the better off their joints are going to be. Now, how we do this here at Woody's Place is um, we provide our seniors with a healthy human grade diet and plenty of um, age appropriate exercise. Uh, again, I, t I just talked about that, the short frequent walks, but the diet I'm not saying they don't get treats because they do get treats throughout the day, but I do factor in those treats um, into their total caloric intake and their treats are never junky treats. Like we're not giving them, you know, milk bones. Um, I feel like I need to apologize for saying that in case anybody's given their dog milk bones, but folks, they're, they're garbage. Please stop. Don't, don't give your dog milk bones, please give them, give them, give them something else, give them jerky, give them carrots, give them apple slices, um, give them beef liver, dried beef liver. Uh, there's plenty of other healthy treats that you, you can give them. That's one simple ingredient that will go a lot further in terms of their nutrition and health than, you know, something akin to a milk bone. Not to mention, if you're giving them a treat like um, dehydrated beef liver, well, there's no and uh, there's no um, nothing that's going to cause inflammation in their body, which also 
um, is a big factor in arthritis. But the same can't be said for giving your dog milk bones. All right, so keeping their weight under control. Um, number two, we incorporate we incorporate herbs and supplements into their diet, um, like turmeric. That's that's our go to. God, we love turmeric. I love turmeric too. <laughs> it just because uh, I have arthritis as well, st- uh, spinal stenosis, and and a uh, couple other things going on with me, and um, I I just turmeric in smoothies you don't even know it's there if you don't like the taste you know there's definitely ways to sneak turmeric in your diet throughout the day um for you and for your dog and it's just the the benefits of turmeric are so well documented especially when it comes to things um like reducing sorry reducing pain and inflammation that can be associated with arthritis uh, cl- uh, glucosamine, glucosamine or chondroitin sulfate. That's another one that we will use from time to time. We used to use that a lot in the beginning. We don't, we don't use that as much anymore because we use a lot of turmeric. Collagen. That's another one. God, we love collagen. That's a, that's another biggie for the dogs and for me. Um, going down a little rabbit trail here, but again, I have spinal stenosis and especially in the winter. Oh gosh, you know, it's like, I'm like one of these poor dogs here. I just can't get up. It hurts so bad. And a few years back, a friend of mine recommended that I take collagen. And I was thinking, you know, it's probably like a snake oil or something like that. It's not going to work, blah, blah, blah. Um, I started taking it. I started putting it in my coffee and, and like turmeric, you know, you have to get a good a high quality collagen. There's a lot of crap out there. So you have to be careful which one you get for yourself or for your dog. So anyway, I I started putting in my coffee, didn't really notice anything at first. And then slowly but surely, as the weeks passed, I was thinking, huh, I can actually get up out of bed without my back hurting. And I can actually, you know, move throughout my day without my back hurting. I could actually bend over without a pain shooting down my leg, you know, and all these things. So I am hooked on collagen and turmeric. It works for me. And since I know it works for me, I make sure the dogs have it as well. Um, because I'm, I'm thinking it's working for them too. Uh, another supplement that we we will use is some sort of um, omega-3 fatty acid which you know helps helps with their joints as well um, I posted in our blog post the supplement um, supplements that we give the dog uh, we like missing link um, they do offer a collagen care soft chew uh, it's a treat for dogs and it has collagen glucosamine chondroitin and turmeric all in the same treat uh, we give it to the dogs as treats. They like it. Uh, we could also put it right in their food and they'll they'll gobble it right down. Just a little side note about turmeric. Turmeric, is it, it, it can thin the blood. Okay, so if you have a dog that's on blood thinner medication, you need to be careful about giving turmeric. Okay, I just feel like I needed to add that. All right, number three. And I just feel like this is common sense too, but I see it so many times that it just breaks my heart. <laughs> Provide your dog with a warm bed that has extra padding. I mean, I don't know how many times I've gone to evaluate a senior German Shepherd and here they have like this crumpled up old blanket on the floor or this sorry looking bed that's all bloated out in the middle and there's hardly anything there and I think to myself oh my god why is this dog laying on this 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 sorry excuse for a bed and the dog's loaded with arthritis um first and foremost if if any of our dogs can get up on the sofa or a bed it's fine we don't care we let them (laughs) they're more than welcome to I don't care about the hair. I vacuum, my clean. It's all good. Um, if they're able to get up on the bed and the sofa and they're comfortable, good for them. If they can't, we pr- we have like 12 beds here right now. And we only have five dogs and they're all, they're all really good beds. Uh, but our favorite bed, which unfortunately they're extremely costly, is the big barker. 
Um, it, it, it has like a seven inch pillow top or orthopedic. It's like a seven inch pillow top orthopedic dog bed. That's what it is. And folks, when I tell you these darn beds are so comfortable, I've actually put two together <laughs> to create like a communal bed <laughs> so I can lay down on the bed with the dogs too. <laughs> It feels so good. And and you can even get them with like a built-in pillow if you want. They're a little more expensive. We have we have two like that, but there are others that don't have the built-in pillow. And, and that's fine too. The dogs really don't care about the built-in pillow. But they're downright super comfortable. Uh, the cover comes off super easy to throw in the wash if need be. There's even a liner on the mattress, the, the pillow top mattress that can come on and off to be washed as well. So again, they're, they're not cheap. I, I will say that right off the bat. But as long as your dog isn't destructive, these beds last. I mean, they do not lose their form. They do not lose their their um, their firmness, their support. They last for years. So I would highly recommend the Big Barker uh, dog bed. Um, again, super, super comfortable and uh, lasts a long time and provides the support your senior German shepherd needs so that he's not laying there in this blown out pillow or this, you know, rag of a blanket on the ground, just aching from his arthritis. All right. The fourth way you can help your senior German shepherd with arthritis, if you can, is eliminate stairs and jumping. Okay. If possible, eliminate stairs and jumping. And I know that's not possible for those with stairs in their home, but stairs are not a friend to your senior German shepherd with arthritis because each step is causing them pain. And they're in, at an even greater risk for a fall on the stairs, which could lead to a bigger, potentially costly problem. Um, when we were still down in southeastern Pennsylvania, we had a two-story home, and this is when we had Woody. And Woody had arthritis and he had been in the very beginning stages of degenerative myelopathy. It was, I had no idea what it was at the time, but I knew he had arthritis. And that poor boy went up and down our stairs. And this was an old house built in the 20s. So these, these stairs were just harsh. They were, they were narrow. They were steep. They were just unforgiving and miserable. And that poor boy went up and down those stairs with me every time I went up and down the stairs um, we had carpeted the steps. So, you know, well, for our, for our sakes too, but so the dogs, cause we had, um, our own senior German shepherd Levi as well to make sure they had traction. But I remember one time coming down those stairs and Woody would practically run down the stairs, I think because he was afraid, but he went down the stairs one time and it, it was like, it kind of reminded me of a toddler when, they're on a hill and they're running and their feet kind of get a little ahead of them. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen that. And and you're watching them run and all of a sudden <laughs> they're just out of control and then they're falling, then they're tumbling because they're they're out of control. That was Woody going down the stairs and I mean he was probably about the fifth or sixth step from the bottom and he was just out of control and did this ugly fall when he got to the bottom. And from that point on, it was, that was it. I put a baby gate up and I felt really bad, but he wasn't allowed to come up and down the stairs with me anymore because he could have really hurt himself. He could have really hurt himself. And I know he was just going up and down those stairs to be with me. And it just killed me to know that he was hurting himself just to please me. Um, the same goes for your senior German Shepherd jumping in and out of a vehicle, your your car or your truck. I mean, we I have a Jeep and a Dodge Ram, so we don't Do the Dodge Ram's been sitting out there. It needs some work, but it's a it's a big jump for the dogs to you know get in and out of. And um, I have a ramp, and I have even steps for the dogs, but we we still have. Some of the dogs that try to jump out, Nona, she'll try to jump out every single time. Brandy, Brandy has elbow dysplasia. She'll try to jump out every single time. And as much as I try to get in the vehicle to lift them out, they're fighting me because they want to jump out. 
So I, I try to never let them jump out of the vehicle because that impact from jumping to, okay, now we're in our driveway, so it's on a hard surface, is such a jolt to their joints, um, especially a dog with arthritis. And I'm sure it just sends, it could send shock waves of pain throughout their body. So we try to assist with a ramp. Um, we like the pet loader. It's kind of like an accordion. Now, we have a ramp as well, like that folds out, but sometimes that just doesn't fit right in the um, entranceway of our vehicle. It works a little bit better for the Jeep, which has a hatchback that opens, but um, I found that some of our residents, if not all of our residents, they, they don't like going up and down the ramp. Um, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know what it is about the ramp, but uh, our good friend Sue got us the pet loader and they're, they're actual stairs. Um, I know I'm just saying don't use stairs, but they're not like regular stairs. It's like an accordion that opens up and um, they're platforms. Yeah, I won't say stairs. It's like a, a four platforms that, that um, are spaced apart. They're all connected and they're spaced apart and it has like a carpet surface. So there's, there's great traction on them and the platforms are, are wide. So the dogs are more um, comfortable walking on them and it's a very gradual um, climb up to to the entrance of the Jeep on this, this pet loader. So, you know, it's, it doesn't really hurt their joints or anything like that. I know I'm not describing it correctly, but I did put the pet loader in our blog post and you can click on the link and actually see a picture of what I'm talking about. But I love the pet loader. Um, again, it's, it's a, it's, it's gradual. The base is, the base to the platforms are wide. It's a stable surface and they feel comfortable walking on it and it fits the entrance way to our vehicle perfectly. All right. Number five. This, this is another one I've, I've seen quite a bit when I go into, um, <clears throat> check out, you know, a senior German shepherd in need. Uh, and I also see it in shelters as well, which it's just mind boggling to me with all those dogs there, but hard surfaces like a hardwood floor, tile or a linoleum, they are not a friend to your German, your senior German shepherd with arthritis. They're not, they're awful. I mean, did you ever see a senior German shepherd with arthritis or, or without trying to navigate a hard floor surface? It's terrible. I mean, they're scared. You know, their, their, their legs are slipping out from underneath them, especially their, their back legs. Like they just don't want to do it. They don't want to walk on a surface like that. Um, so how to get around this is make sure you have lots of surfaces that will give them traction to walk on. Um, uh, we have lots of area rugs here. And I have to laugh, like when I shoot videos and stuff like that, or people who come to visit, it's like, I have area rugs everywhere and, and they don't match because let's face it, I've had lots of dogs poop on lots of area rugs. And after a while, I'm just throwing them out <laughs> and I'm getting a new one. I mean, that is one of the, the beauties of an area rug. Once they're done, they're done. You just throw it out and you get another one. It's not like it's wall to wall and you have to rip it all up, but I have lots of area rugs because... I need to make sure our senior German shepherds here have traction and have confidence to walk on the floor because every, every, where we, we, um, I'm sorry, every room we have here with the exception of the master bedroom is hardwood or linoleum or tile. So lots of area rugs and there's a company called Ruggable. It's a uh, ruggable.com that they actually have washable rugs. How cool is that? Um, and I did incorporate their link in um, their website in the blog post too. And just so you know, no affiliation. I just, I just think they're really cool. <laughs> and again, you're going to pay a little bit more for them, but they're going to last longer. Uh, the other thing that the other things that we'll incorporate on hard surface is um, anti fatigue mats. My whole office are those. Um, it's like a giant puzzle. They're just tiles that you you click together, and you can either make a cover a big space with the fatigue mats or a small space. Um, 
I like the anti-fatigue mats in my office. I'm in there quite a bit doing uh, printing and designing and whatnot, shipping for, for the shepherd shop. And again, I have spinal stenosis, so I'm, I'm on my feet in there a lot, and that helps me, and also it helps the dogs. Um, with the fatigue mats, I will say this, uh, there ends up being a lot of holes, like small holes in them, because the dog's nails will go through them. So after a while, it doesn't look fantastic, but you can just buy new pieces of anti-fatigue mat and, and pop them right in. Yoga mats. That's a that's another um, that's another trick we use for uh, for the dogs with arthritis or any sort of mobility issue on hardwood surfaces. It, again, it gives them traction. It gives them confidence. We know they're they're safe walking on those uh, those type of those type of um, surfaces. So yoga mats. Let's face it. I mean, you can get them at Walmart. You can get them at Five Below. They're fantastic. You just put them down on the ground. If if you find they're still moving around a little bit, we'll use tape or even like a little bit of silicone, little dab of silicone on the floor. And, um, you know, when you're done with it, you just, you just pull it all up. Sometimes there might be a little adhesive left. You know, you could use something like a Goo Gone, get it up and it's gone. Um, there is a company that sells rolls of yoga mat that you can cut whatever size you want. Uh, I forget the name of the company. Let me see. I, I think I did put it in. I think I did put it in the, the blog post. Well, you can get it on Amazon. It, it's on Amazon as well. There's um, there's yeah, yoga. It's like it's like economy yoga mat roll. <laughs> Um, and again, it's, it's pretty expensive. It's all, it's like $165, but you get 104 foot of it. And, uh, if you have, if you have dogs that have, you know, that are fecal incontinent or, you know, they, they have frequent ac accidents inside, I can almost guarantee you they're going to have it on a surface like the area rug, uh, the anti-fatigue mats or the yoga mats, uh, because that's where they're going to be walking. And, there, it's it's easier to clean. It's easier to clean up off of an anti fatigue mat or a yoga mat. And again, when you get to the point where it's just done and you can't you know, you know use it anymore, you just pick it up, you throw it out, and there you go. You got this giant roll of yoga mat that you can just cut another piece off of, put it down on your floor, and your dog is good to go. So I would highly recommend the anti fatigue mat and yoga mats especially if you have a dog that um, is having accidents inside. All right, moving along here. Our next go-to is um, CBD oil. Yeah, we love CBD oil for our senior German Shepherds, and I, I feel like I can do a blog post in and of itself on CBD oil, and uh, maybe I will somewhere down the road. But uh, I'm going to cut to the chase here. Not all CBD oils are created equal, just like turmeric and collagen. There is a lot of snake oil in a bottle out there. Okay, you don't want to get your CBD oil at, you know, the local farmer's market. Sorry, farmer's market people. I mean, I, I get my produce from you. But listen, we need CBD oil that has been scientifically proven to have what it's supposed to have in it, okay? You want certification on your CBD oil. And if the company that you're buying it from is not willing to give you any sort of certification on your CBD oil, move on because it's it's just not, it's just not worth it. Um, it's not cheap. And if you're buying a cheap CBD oil, if you're getting it online and you're, you're now paying $17, $20, forget it. It's, it's not worth it, okay? Um, there is a reason why CBD oils are so expensive. There's a lot that goes into it, and there's a lot uh, that goes into certifying the CBD oil. Um, but anyway, I, I, I'll I'll do a I'll do a, bl a blog post on that later. So CBD oil, we use that quite a bit um, for our senior German shepherds here for multiple different ailments, not just arthritis, but uh, it definitely does help with their arthritis as well. Uh, just a little side note here. We like Dr. Hemp Dog hemp oil tinctures. Um, 
and again, I'm going down another rabbit trail here, and I'm sorry for doing this, but they they actually call you. They actually call you and they talk with you about your dog and they want to know what you want the CBD oil for. Um, and they give you the dose and how often they call back, they check in to see how your dog is doing, to see if there's any adjustments that need to be made. I mean, they're, they're just phenomenal. All right. And the other thing that we will incorporate when the time comes is some sort of an NSAID um, to keep our senior German Shepherds with arthritis comfortable, um, that could be carprofen, uh, gabapentin. Carprofen is generic for Remedil folks. Um, Medicam, Loxicam, um, something along those lines. Um, we try to avoid them for as long as possible because they do have um, other negative effects on your dog's, you know, organs, their kidneys, their liver, stuff like that, um, and. We have also even incorporated other painkillers, such as a trauma doll, which is, you know, a big gun, but when, or injections even, but when you're, you know, the senior German shepherds in our care get to the point where everything else we're doing um, just doesn't seem to be doing the trick, we do start to go to um, NSAIDs and possibly, you know, injections or trauma doll to help them with their pain. Um, I know there's, you know, surgeries available too. I, we've never, we've never gone that far. Um, but you know, you, you finally get to the point with the arthritis in the senior German shepherd where, you know, you're just trying to maintain their quality of life. You know, you, you know, the end is in sight soon or maybe not so soon, but it's coming and, and they're in pain and everything else you're doing isn't, isn't maintaining their pain level. Um, so then you have to move on to something, something else that you know is also going to have a negative side effect, but you are going to incorporate it, or we do anyway, incorporate it because we're doing everything we can to keep that dog comfortable. But in the end, when it, when it comes time to say goodbye, if the dog has, you know, terrible arthritis and they're just completely miserable, then, we, you know, we opt for euthanasia and help the senior German Shepherd across the Rainbow Bridge, even though, you know, it breaks our hearts. Um, at that point, there's really nothing else we can do. All right. So that's it, folks. Again, I've gone over 45 minutes here. But if your senior German Shepherd has is showing signs of arthritis, there is hope. Um, joint pain can be managed by all the tips provided for you. Um, and again, it's all in our blog post as well. Um, but that being said, and I, I, I'm going to say this at the end of each podcast for season three, it is crucial to the health and welfare of your senior German Shepherd to partner with a trusted veterinarian. So if you suspect your senior German Shepherd has arthritis, they're, you know, again, they're showing signs of a limp, stiffness, trouble getting up, weird body posture, please Please get even snapping when they don't normally snap. Please get your dog to a trusted veterinarian to seek treatment. All right, folks, that's it. That's all I have this week. Um, until next time, be well. Uh, again, in the show notes, I will post the link for our blog and a couple of other links for, um, for some of the things we talked about in this podcast. <music>